Hi folks, welcome to the Moving Beyond Being Good podcast by Gary Ryan from Organisations That Matter. In this podcast, Gary shares everything about servant leadership, service leadership, authentic leadership, how to create high performance cultures, service excellence and life balance. Here's your host, Gary Ryan. This is Gary Ryan from Organisations That Matter and this is Chapter 5 of Disruption Leadership Matters, Lessons for Leaders from the Pandemic. The chapter's title is Vision Matters. Chapter 5 Vision Matters, read by Gary Ryan. Creative tension is a concept I first learned from Peter Senge's book, The Fifth Discipline, The Art and Practice of the Learning Organization. It happens that Senge first discovered the idea from one of his mentors, Robert Fritz. Fritz is a businessman, a writer and composer for film. He has worked in both the arts and consulting with Fortune 500 companies most of his life. He first described creative tension in his book, The Path of Least Resistance. I find Senge and Fritz's relationship fascinating. Here is Fritz, an artist, mentoring an MIT Sloan School of Management academic and researcher, and one of the world's most significant leadership influences, Senge. The arts informing business. How wonderful. The simplest way to understand creative tension is to consider holding an elastic band between two hands, one above the other. Assuming the hands are apart, tension will exist in the stretched elastic band. Imagine if this is the tension between a vision of the future and your current reality. Your top hand represents your vision or goal and your bottom hand represents your current reality. There are two ways the tension in the elastic band can be resolved. Either lower your vision or raise your current reality towards your vision. Assuming you want your vision to become your reality, your vision is then locked and causes you to take action to move your current reality toward your vision. Figure 6, Creative Tension. Page 91 of the physical book. This concept forms a robust structure. Earlier in the book, I shared the smart, hard work example of my daughter Sienna making the impossible possible by being selected in her school's top aerobics team. I could have just as quickly used that story to explain creative tension. By focusing on what she wanted, her vision, Sienna took actions to create that outcome. She recruited friends, did her research to find out what training she should be doing and, importantly, did the training over the six weeks leading into the trials. While her current reality included many reasons she couldn't get selected in the top team, her focus remained on what she wanted rather than what she didn't want. While her actions did not guarantee success, they significantly enhanced the chance of it happening, which it did. Creative tension works when you are clear about the vision or goal you want to achieve. The same is true for organizations. Strategic plans are an example of documents organizations create to describe their vision. These plans are usually based on three, five or ten year time frames. Often they are accompanied by an action plan that describes in detail what the organization will do over the first year of implementing the strategic plan. As each year concludes, the organization establishes a new action plan to continue the journey. Along the way, the organization tends to use its vision statement, mission statement, values and action plan to summarize the tension that the organization is resolving between its future and current reality. When used effectively, creative tension helps navigate roadblocks to achieving your vision. When creative tension is not adequately understood, roadblocks can derail an organization to the point where its vision becomes irrelevant. The easiest way to resolve the tension is to focus on the organization's current state. The COVID-19 pandemic is such a roadblock. If an organization's vision has been weak or not clear or not shared, then the easiest way to react is to focus on its current reality. Which function of an organization's current reality would draw the most attention when the world's economies have been impacted due to legislated shutdowns by governments worldwide? Finance. When an organization's vision hasn't been real, it will focus on its current reality. This short-term focus is what was happening before the pandemic, but only became noticeable due to it. I suspect this will be one of the greatest lessons for leaders. 
An old biblical saying is, quote, where there is no vision, the people perish, end quote. Proverbs 29, 18, King James Version. Vision matters. The pandemic is just a roadblock around which the organization needs to navigate if it continues to have a chance to create its vision. Decisions and actions ought to be taken with the vision in focus. Ask yourself, how has our vision influenced our actions throughout the pandemic? How was our vision influencing our actions before the pandemic? If you cannot provide examples of how your vision was alive and well before the pandemic, then it is likely that all decisions and actions taken since it started have focused on your current reality. Concentrating on your current reality during a crisis is what you ought to do. However, if your organization's vision does not inform the context for your actions, actions will be taken based on each person's vision. When personal vision directs the action taken in your current reality, decisions and activities will be inconsistent across the organization. On the other hand, shared vision is a powerful force that generates consistency in decision-making during a crisis. In an interview with Karen Volo, Chief Joybringer at Evolution Academy, Bob Chapman, CEO of the Barry Waymiller Group, was very clear. No employee should lose their job because of an economic downturn. He views it as his responsibility with his board and senior managers to create a business model that can sustain downturns. The pandemic has spawned the mother of all downturns, so the organization's vision has been tested since February 2020. However, he has consistently said if the company wishes to continue to achieve its vision and growth, it needs to keep its people employed during these difficult times to flourish when the good times return which they will. Chapman understands that the work he was doing with his board and senior managers before the pandemic came along is benefiting him now. Australian tech firm Atlassian has recruited more staff than ever in a calendar year throughout 2020. Due to remote work, Atlassian's products and services have been in more demand than ever before. However, rather than simply profiteering from this situation, Atlassian has been proactive in reducing the financial barriers to small organizations accessing its products and services. Owners Mike Cannon-Brooks and Scott Farquhar have been clear that while the pandemic has proven to benefit their company, their value, don't mess with the customer, must hold, especially when their customer, or in many cases, new customers, are hurting. Vision, mission, and values are, in fact, interdependent. All three are required when making decisions about how to react to the pandemic. Some of you will discover that the real issue that the pandemic has surfaced, highlighted by your reaction to it, is that your vision, mission and values were not alive before February 2020. Yes, they were printed on the walls of your offices and in your annual reports, but they weren't alive in the sense of informing day-to-day -day decisions. Your vision has been to maintain financial viability, period. We do live with the economic fact that organizations need finances to survive. However, if you have operated from the perspective that growth is constant and forever moving upward, you wouldn't have prepared for a financial rainy day. The never-ending pressure for this year's financial reports to read better than last year has created a tension that has caused many leaders to be driven to make decisions for the sake of the short term with little or no regard for what they may mean for the long term. As we saw earlier, employee engagement is paramount for long-term organizational success. A lack of understanding of this relationship has caused many leaders to reduce headcount as early as possible to save the bottom line. Unfortunately, these actions have been necessary in many instances because the companies were never prepared for a downturn, even though history is full of their occurrences. Think the global financial crisis of 2008 as just as one example. From an economic perspective, companies have had to make these cuts to save some jobs. As we move forward, the lesson from Bob Chapman is powerful. Can your business model sustain the next downturn? Roadblocks help you to recognize your vision is missing. Monsu Caulfield is the student association that serves undergraduate students at the Caulfield campus for Monash University in Melbourne, Australia. 
The pandemic caused significant disruption to the tertiary sector in Australia due to international students not being able to enter Australia due to the international border closure. Many thousands of students withdrew from their courses or have continued to study online. The once vibrant Caulfield campus became a ghost town overnight and remained in limbo. Despite never giving up, the efforts from the team of staff and available student representatives, in addition to the efforts from university staff, have had little impact on students physically attending campus when the restrictions have allowed this to happen. Lynn Nye, General Manager of Monsu Caulfield and Caitlin Dunn, 2020 President, recognised early in the pandemic that the organisation didn't have a clear vision to guide its decision making. Notions existed in individual staff and student representatives' minds, but they were loose and not coordinated and driving the organisation. Lynn and Caitlin were aware that the downturn in student enrolments would immediately affect the organisation's revenue. As a precaution, they made tough decisions to manage their expenses. They included staff in conversations about their predicament and with support from them, agreed to limit each person's workload to the critical work associated with keeping the organisation afloat. As soon as they had ensured they had financial viability for the foreseeable future, primarily due to the prudent financial management of the organisation occurring well before the pandemic, they decided to rectify their lack of a compelling vision and put together a team to develop a strategic plan. The development of the strategic plan occurred 100% online over five months and was ratified by the new Executive Council early in 2021. It will continue to be reviewed on an annual basis. As is typical with the creative process associated with developing a vision, as staff and student representatives engaged and contributed to its development, they found themselves inspired to take actions that were moving them toward their picture of the future. One clear example is their strategic goal relating to the organisation's environmental impact. Despite the disruption to their services continuing into 2021, the organisation has made considerable progress with its environmental goals. The positivity that has flowed from the project has helped the organisation contend with the ongoing challenges that the pandemic has inflicted on its other essential operations. Use the disruption to revisit your vision. A critical benefit of any disruption is that it creates an opportunity to ask yourself, is our vision what we want? A vision does not have to be set in stone. Instead, it gathers clarity over time. Sometimes you may discover that what you thought you wanted isn't what you want at all. You find out that you want something different, which is fine. Readjust and change direction to get you on the path to creating your new vision. Often, you discover that you do want to achieve your vision despite what is happening in your current reality. This is one of the most beneficial aspects of disruption. While the disruption may affect your current situation, when it helps you reaffirm where you want to go, it gives you the energy to identify and then implement the required strategies to get you there. Gareth Kent, Director at Preston Row Patterson PRP, Geelong, Warrnambool and Mount Gambier in Australia, recognised that his company's vision needed refreshing. While the company vision was relevant to him, he doubted whether it was front of mind for the staff in the organisation. Demand for residential, commercial and agricultural property valuations skyrocketed, as did the requirement for valuations provided for family law purposes. He had recruited more staff and everyone was busier than ever. Gareth engaged me to work with all staff to refresh the company vision. Over three months of interaction and feedback, an updated vision, mission and value statement was released. Notably, the new statement isn't just a set of brand new, shiny words on posters. It has been directly referenced and used for decision making. The recently formed leadership team have been regularly challenged to provide examples of the vision in action. And those sessions have continued throughout 2021. In a mid-year session, one of the youngest members of the leadership team shared a challenge he faced outside work. One of the updated values is caring and communicating. Every leader listened with 100% attention when he shared his story. He explained that he was confident in sharing his situation with the rest of the leadership team because of the care and support he had received from Gareth 
and the rest of the directors. One of the leaders, a confessed hard-nosed numbers guy, said, wow, that conversation was raw. And that's exactly the sort of team I want to be part of. At some point, something will happen to all of us and we will need care and support. This is about more than work and the numbers. From October 2020 through to June 2021, Garris Business experienced six record months of growth and recruited another five staff. Vision Matters and PRP Geelong, Warrnambool and Mount Gambier is proof of the power it can generate. Equally, vision can create frustration, which is typical for all leaders. How to overcome the frustration that comes with the vision? Lynn Nye is frustrated. Her organisation is far from achieving the vision created by a strategic plan developed in the last half of 2020. Lynn's frustration is standard and comes with the territory of being a leader. This is the tension in the term creative tension. The nature of leadership is that the future you want to create is more evident to you than your followers. The gap is as apparent to you as the nose on your face. But the picture of the future your vision paints and the assessment of the gap between it and your current reality isn't as apparent to everyone else. At least, that is how it can feel when you are at the top. It often feels lonely. That is why working with your leadership team, as Lynn has, is essential to enable them to share in the vision. And so is taking stock and celebrating the progress of your current reality. As the bottom of your elastic band moves toward your vision, notice the successes you create along the way. Celebrate them. Use the celebrations and recognition of progress as the catalyst for smart, hard work that is required to progress your journey. Following strict guidelines, Gareth and the team from PRP Geelong, Warrnambool and Mount Gambia celebrated Christmas in July. Despite a lockdown causing a postponement to the function, most staff and their partners were in attendance, many of them having travelled hundreds of kilometres. At the event, Gareth went to great lengths to recognise all staff and their partners for their work and the personal challenges they had overcome throughout the previous 16 months to serve their customers. Marriages, childbirths, qualification achievements and the company's successes were all celebrated. The event could have easily been placed in the too hard basket, and it was hard to organise given COVID restrictions and repeated lockdowns. But Gareth and his team persisted because recognising the company's progress and everyone's contribution to it, including their partners and families, was too important not to celebrate. The conversations between staff and their partners were a joy to witness. And it is to the quality of your conversations that we now focus your attention. Once again, this is Gary Ryan from Organisations That Matter, the host of the Moving Beyond Being Good podcast, and I look forward to speaking with you in the next episode.